one piece that I want to bring to everybody's attention. I don't know if it's an official part of the, of the agenda today or not, um, is we did learn last week uh, that uh, based on the funds uh, that were uh, appropriated as part of the PACT Act, this master plan, as far as the VA requirements are concerned, is now fully funded through 2036. So all of the expenses that we've put forward in terms of the infrastructure requirements, the construction requirements, uh, in some cases, capital contributions, you may hear more of that from OAM, uh, that's included to the tune of what, $360 million or so. Uh, over the next 14 years. So good news there. I know there's been some discussion at the DCOED in the past about getting you know this put into official budgets and now it's in official budgets and access to, to that money. So um, that's good news. There's some money uh, still uncalled for or, or um, that you know, should we identify other facets of the program that aren't currently part of that, we could potentially um, try to uh, capture. Uh, but the good news is um, that our plan as currently presented um, should not have any impediments to funding. And, and I- Can we like clap for that one? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. If it wasn't for the dedication of this team in getting the numbers up and being able to have them weigh in for the PACT Act, we would not have been able to do that. So thank you, Jennifer. And I think you know those of you who have been around for a while know that you know, that was just funding in general uh, was identified as a challenge a few years ago, and and you know with the close to hundred thousand dollars we've already spent or committed, you know this is I mean hundred million. Excuse me. Um, this is uh, good news and. That won't be a reason for further delays moving forward. Rob uh, Good morning. So, Steve, I wanted to just follow up because the numbers you gave were so big and so encouraging. I want to make sure I heard you correctly. What's the total funding commitment and how will we see it reflected? Give the microphone to Alan because he knows the future. It's 361. Sorry, I was off by one. Identify yourself, Alan, please. Alan Chang. Um, so, all the projects that. Uh, and going forward, we're going to have to present it the projects in previous boards uh, meeting. Those projects are actively being carried out. And as we go forward with contracting process, executing the projects, a lot of credit goes to Mr. Fisher, uh, Chris Lucian, and Mark, uh, Rebecca Marshall from the different team, help us navigate through the VHA financing process to get the funding here to execute the project. That is fantastic. I mean, I, I really think that that's the best piece of news I've heard of four years of working on. I mean, that's an incredible accomplishment. And to General Hopper's point, I think that's the perfect illustration of how collaboratively the board can work with VA's leadership. As you'll remember, about two years ago, we raised a recommendation that said, look, all of these infrastructure costs, all of these parcel turnover costs ought to be the subject of strategic budgeting. And you guys obviously not only reacted and acted on it, but you mastered it. So I really commend the staff. Uh, this is, from my point of view, the most tangible evidence I've seen of how VA recognizes what a momentous challenge and opportunity the redevelopment of this campus. So that's an incredible number. Congratulations. So this is Steve. Um, and if I may, I, I want to make sure that folks recognize this is a, all of VA accomplishment. It's not a DLA thing. So Brett Sims and the OAEM team, the congressional liaison team, you know, they got this stuff into the PACT Act and you know all of the others who support it are really the ones that made the difference. Um, and you know, our, our team helped to lay a claim for some of the money. Uh, and 
and that's important. But the, I mean, the overall pot of money is larger. It's not just for us, um, but you know, I think it's 975 or something million dollars overall. Uh, but we're we're getting a third of it, and and 25 percent is still unspoken for. So, you know, it's a I, I always have viewed OPM not as Office of Personnel Management, but other people's money. And, you know, when we can try to get that, you know, that's what we try to do. So as um, as we've talked about other kinds of opportunities and, and ways in which we can legally support programs, then we'll continue to do that. Uh, and, you know, the, the network has made it easy for us to um, Go forward and try to do that, but uh, you know it, it's not lost on me. OAM's role, you know, since this is really targeted to support um, enhanced use lease opportunities, and that determination of support is always up to interpretation, and, and because of those interpretations, you know, we'll we'll get the money of what we need in order to move forward with these uh, with this master plan. Over.